everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Daniel. I make videos related to design, tech, and lifestyle. In today's video, I'll be sharing my design book collection that I have accumulated throughout these years, and I will be breaking it up into five different sections so that it is easier for you to follow and easier for you to navigate. I'm making this video in case anyone is interested in purchasing any of these books. I know me personally, I like to preview the inside of a book before purchasing. So yeah, hopefully by watching this video, you get a better sense of what's inside. Uh, but with that being said, let's get started. The first book is a visual branding guide. What I like about this book is it has actual case studies of different types of projects. And each project is very detailed in the design process from project deliverables, pricing, strategy, marketing, and so on. Next is a book on identities for festivals and fairs. This one is probably my personal favorite. This book is packed with design inspiration. It has incredible projects that showcases environmental design, print design, identity design, and much more. I also love that it showcases various design styles from minimalism to maximalism, but my ultimate favorite thing is the book cover. Next is Aaron's book. He is well known in the design and art community. This book is about his life and his journey, how he became who he is today. What I really like about this book is how transparent he is as he showcases all of his early projects ranging from sketches, drawings, illustrations, and logo designs. He also features his process behind building his company since the beginning of his journey to the present. Next is one out of 10 books that's part of the palette mini series. This one in particular is number nine, the nature palette. Using colors from natural environments, what I like about this book is the variation of projects being featured especially for packaging design. It's a great design inspiration book. I use it when working on a new package design. It's a great book to use as reference. I definitely want to collect all the other series. The first one is Designing with Type. I highly recommend getting this book if you're a graphic design student, whether you are going to school or are self-taught. This book teaches you how to design with type, literally what the title is, but it gives you a bit of history on typography and it teaches you the basics. It helps you explore all the different ways to incorporate and work with typography and help you choose a correct typeface for your project. Next is Typographic Design, Form and Communication. I recently got this book. I have not really looked too much into it, but it's similar to the previous book I showed. Cool thing about this one is towards the end of the book, it has several different typefaces that are shown in different sizes. This is helpful and comes in handy when you are working on a project that will need to be printed to see how big or small you want the text to be and whether it is readable or not and so on. Next is a book on calligraphy. As you can see, I have not done the exercises yet, but the cool thing about it is that it teaches you modern calligraphy. Fun fact, I've been exploring different ways to step away from my computer screen, so I might give this a try. The first book is Designing with Color. This is actually one of my first set of design books in my collection, so it's a bit outdated. However, it is still a great introduction to design principles when working with color. What I like about this book is how they incorporate two colors side by side and list associations based on the color, what each color represents, when to use it, and examples on how it is used.
Next is Graphic Designer's Color Handbook. This is a great book for learning how to use color for print. This is very useful knowledge because no matter where you end up working at, knowing how to set up files for print is crucial. First up is trademarks and logos. This is an outdated book. I think I got it at a thrift store. Fun fact, this is also one of my first design books in my collection. What I like about this book is since it's outdated, it showcases projects from the past, featuring old packaging and ads. It's cool to have a better history inside this book. Next is logo. What I like about this book, it's the size. I can easily carry this inside my bag, very convenient if I want to take it with me. Most logos that are shown seem to be very corporate. Other than that, it's a nice book to have and very affordable. Next up is logo design. This is also on the smaller side, a bit bulky, but not too much. What I like about this book is that it is broken down by categories, so it is easier to navigate and reference. Next is Logo Modernism. I feel like every designer has this book, and if you don't, you should definitely add it to your collection. Besides what's inside this book, it's a great coffee table book that I get to display in my living room. Now for the inside, it showcases incredible collection of logo marks. It's a great book to reference and get inspiration for your logo designs. First book on the list is the Win Without Pitching Manifesto. This book teaches you how to position yourself as an expert rather than an order taker which typically happens as a designer. As designers, we sell creative services that solve a problem within their business. Therefore, we must charge for the value that we offer. Next is Zag. This book is a step-by-step -step on why it's important to differentiate yourself from your competition and offering something different in order to stand out. He provides a 17-step process to help brands identify and leverage their unique qualities Provide clear directions for building and maintaining strong, relevant brands. Next, we have Building a Story Brand. This book teaches you on the importance of messaging, positioning, and storytelling. It's mainly about simplifying your marketing message so that it resonates with your target consumers. It's a must read if you want to sell brand strategy as a service as it will help you learn how to help other businesses grow and gain customer loyalty. Next is Getting to Yes. This is mainly a business book, but I believe it's beneficial if you are selling any type of service. Which as creatives, we sell design solutions to our clients. Therefore, this book helps you how to handle client negotiations in ways that foster collaboration and satisfaction. Next is Creative Strategy and the Business of Design. This book offers practical insights to help designers understand the strategic side of design, as he guides you on how to speak the language of clients, align creative solutions with business objectives, and make compelling cases for their ideas. Next we have Creating a Brand Identity. This is a book mainly about branding. It covers essential elements like brand research, logo design, typography, color schemes, and style guides, offering practical exercises and case studies that help you create cohesive and impactful brand identities that resonate with your target audience. Next is the Creative Act. I got this book to learn how to deal with creative block. As designers, creative block is inevitable. This book helps you focus less on techniques or specific outcomes and encourages you to embrace a mindset of openness and curiosity by letting go of the pressure to get everything perfect and treating creativity as a practice rather than a task. 
Next is grid systems and graphic design. This book is essential for graphic designers. It talks about the principles of grid design, providing practical examples and layouts to illustrate how grids can organize content, create visual harmony, and enhance the overall aesthetic of a design. I personally struggle with design layout, but knowing how the grid system works will help you become a better designer. Last two books are newly added to my collection. I got this book because it provides practical advice on how to navigate the industry and it goes in depth on how to run a freelance business, run a design studio, work with clients and much more. Last but not least is graphic design thinking. I'm done reading the first chapter, it talks about how to define problems. There's a section where it shows a case study and it's a conversation with a client. It goes into detail about how to conduct research and analyze a client while they are conducting a questionnaire. I found this information valuable when it comes to onboarding a new client because it's important to ask the right questions to have a better problem solving solution. And that's the end of this video. I really hope you found this video somewhat helpful. Um, I know I've been MIA from YouTube, but um, I actually have a ton of new content ideas that I want to share. And probably my next video will be an updated day in the life just to catch up and share what I've been up to lately. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Um, thank you for watching and see you on my next video. Take that cut. Cut. And cut.